Hey everybody, it's me, Mark, uh, the party junkie. So let me show you what's going on here. Um, I've been doing some triathlon training and I've developed a little bit of pain down in my ankle region here. Um, yeah, I wear Vibrams when I run, but that's not uh, what's causing the problem, I don't think. It's uh, when I'm biking. Uh, I get a little lazy when I'm pushing down on the pedal sometimes. And uh, I think my foot kind of goes like this when I'm pushing down. And so, anyway, I'm developing some pain right here. And so now I'm scared to bike. So I've got a triathlon tomorrow, and uh, I'm gonna try to make some, some pedals. Um, I guess more along the lines of platforms so that my, my Vibrams can fit into them. So, um, let me show you what I've got going on over here. Uh, I'm gonna make some, uh, some pedal platforms out of carbon fiber. So I had to make a mold, I worked on that yesterday. So let me show you this. Okay, here's the mold that I created. And, and let me just give you a quick tutorial on how I did that. Basically, I made some plans, drew up some plans. I took a, a biking shoe and um, got all my, my lines and everything for where the, uh, the cleat hooks to the shoe. Um, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently than, than a normal shoe. Um, but anyway, I made this plan, taped it or glued it to some handy board, some quarter inch handy board. And then I took that and screwed it to a piece of three quarter inch particle board and took the router, flush cut, cut out my shapes, did four of these. This one I actually actually screwed up on so that's why I'm not using it but I thought it'd be good to show you show you as an example. Took the back side, made some lines, sanded it down to match the angles of the actual shoe. So you can see here how that will sit. The cleat will go right here. It's flat. And my foot will be sitting in a platform that tapers. So I glued another piece of uh, a particle board on top of that and this is what we came up with it's beautiful um, normally what I do is take some dirt tech spray this off let it cure and then come back and wet sand it to a nice beautiful glossy sheen don't have time to do that um, I'll do that an another day because um, I'll make some of these my friend wants some so I'm just going to use some plastic Greek preg, put lay it over the molds, and then vacuum bag that down, and hopefully that'll work. So, got to go over and do the uh, the vacuum bagging and lay up. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so I've got all my stuff ready to go for the layup. So let me show you what I'm going to be doing. I didn't put any Duratec or gel coat or anything on this uh, particular mold. So um, I'm just going to use some plastic for now. I realize it's going to wrinkle, but that's okay for the prototype. Um, I'm going to be using Stretch Lawn as my vacuum bag. This stuff is great because it stretches around some complex curves and stuff. I've also got my breather ready to go. I'm going to be using uh, perforated plastic um, on top of the carbon fiber. Just to give you an idea, it's going to go this plastic, carbon fiber, perforated plastic. I'm not going to be using any pill ply on this. And then I'm going to be using breather on top of that and then the Stretch Lawn. So over here, I've got my carbon fiber cut. Um, I'm using five plies, it's quite a bit. Um, and I've also got this plastic. This is just vacuum bag. I'm just gonna be doing um, the wet out on this so I can pretty much make a pre-preg out of that. And then I've got some aluminum inserts. So what'll happen is here, you can imagine, I would have liked to have gotten some three inch, I couldn't find any, so I just had a two and one inch, but that should be fine. Um, the cleat will mount to this. So I'm gonna be putting three layers of carbon fiber down. This is gonna be sandwiched between that and then two more on top. So I will go ahead and do the process. Um, I am using a four harness, uh, AS4 carbon fiber. This is, um, I believe it's 6K, 11 ounces. 
and then I'm going to be using some resin research epoxy it's their uh, 2100 system with a fast hardener so I will fill you in after it's vacuum bagged I'll give you a little update on it all right, so I got this uh, all laid up and vacuum bagged and it's looking good. The pre-preg worked out good. You can see that there's not much uh, epoxy coming through. Um, just to give you a, a heads up, I forgot to tell you, I'm using a piece of phenolic here. Um, I find that when I put the particle board in the oven, it warps. So I like to secure it to something that's solid. This is three quarter inch uh, uh, phenolic and really love this stuff to use. And then I've got a manifold on here um, with my vacuum pump. Um, I just find that uh, doing two hoses on here helps uh, get a better vacuum. Uh, here's the pump that I'm using. Got this from Veneer Supplies. Uh, it's a great pump. Um, right now it's pulling uh, 24 inches of mercury, so we're good there. It's a good uh, vacuum. Um, also, this pump doesn't run continuously. It can, but I've got it uh, set up so that when it gets up to a certain point, it shuts off and then when the pressure falls below another certain point, it kicks back on. So, uh, that's pretty much it. You can see the stretch lawn stuff is pretty cool to work with. Uh, again, this is stretch lawn 200. Uh, sometimes I, I like to do stretch lawn right to the carbon fiber. However, with the 200, I find it sticks to the, uh, the carbon fiber and epoxy. The 800 doesn't as bad. So I'll use that if I wanna, if I don't wanna have to finish apart after. But I think this is going to work out good. I will uh, let this cure. It should take about two, three hours. And then I'll come back to it and clean them up. All right, it's a few hours later and uh, it's done curing. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. I don't have a cameraman today. So I will uh, just show you what it looks like after I get it all taken apart. All right, so here we are. I just pulled this out of the mold, pulled a lot of the plastic off. You can still see there's some plastic, uh, some uh, epoxy residue here. Um, most of this will get sanded off anyway. Turned out about like I expected. There's the inside. Outside. Now I just got to cut it out, trim it up, and attach the hardware. So I'm going to go ahead and trim it out. We use a diamond blade grinding wheel. Uh, Dremel, whatever I need to to get it out. It's, uh, probably also use a, a sander. So there you have it. All right, so I was cutting it close on time with working on these, so I stopped videotaping and just got the fit, the project finished up because um, I wanted to wear them during the triathlon, like I was telling you. Um, so anyway, let me uh, just go back and explain to you what I did to finish these up. I went ahead and cut them out, and you can see here there's a, a spot here for the uh, the arch and then I just sanded everything else out smooth and then just matched it up to the other side so they both look the same then what I did was I took some leather and I put it on the, the back here for the heel and this part here you can see I it pulls the leather forward so that when the back of the heel goes in there it doesn't pop up on you when you're riding and uh, that worked out pretty good uh, I just used some some leather rivets and drilled some holes and the uh, the platform here and the, the leather and just rivet it in there with some leather rivets and the way that that works is you have two halves of the rivet put one side on on the inside and the other part on the outside here you put something solid behind it then you use this it's a rivet setter and you just put this on the head there and smack it with a hammer and that sets the uh, the rivet together so that's all we did there for the heel the next thing was was the strap. Um, I was going to originally use a D-ring, but decided not to. So I just used a little tile uh, diamond blade that you can get for your your Dremel, and I cut a nice little line in there. And that does two things: one, one, it helps it to to not bunch up, and um, I did it small enough so that that uh, I wouldn't have any problems with the carbon fiber coming off or whatnot. So this uh, cargo strap, I, I was originally going to use seat belt, but it was too expensive. This cargo strap only cost eight bucks for 20 feet of it. So it was a, a no brainer there. It was pretty cheap. Um, I just wrapped it through that, that slot there and used a box and an X pattern to, to fasten it on the sewing machine. 
Uh, the next thing is is the uh, the, the Velcro. Um, when this Velcro gets wet, this is just sticky back Velcro. When this gets wet, it pulls off real easy. So um, I didn't have time to go back and sew on it. Um, but I'll probably take this Velcro off, get some different type of Velcro that's sticky back, put it on there, and then sew it on. And I think that'll work a lot better. When I was unstrapping them during the race, um, the Velcro that I had across here just started pulling off. So anyway, that just wraps over like this, and it holds your foot nice and snug in there. You can see I got another slot on this side too. Okay, and then the final thing is, is, is here, we drilled some holes and tapped them so that we could screw into them without uh, putting nuts on the other side. And you can see here I've actually got um, eight holes. And the reason why is because I originally tapped this for a number eight screw and then realized my, my screw wasn't long enough so I had to go back and re-tap it for a number six. I only had six on hand but, but luckily I had those six on hand so that this would work out since the uh, hardware stores were closed when I was working on this. So anyway, I only had six. That's why you only see three here. You're definitely gonna wanna use four because this started deforming the head after riding. The head of the screw is what I'm talking about. So the next thing that you'll notice on here is some electrical tape. Originally I wanted to put the uh, vinyl lining on there and I still will. I'll take the electrical tape off and then clean it and then put vinyl lining on. Um, basically there's not a lot of grip on the carbon fiber, it's real slick. And uh, if you're trying to push down on the pedal, then um, it just comes right off the, uh, it just comes right off of it because it's so slick. And um, anyway, I'm not real great at just clipping in first thing. I have to pedal a couple of times before I can take the time to, to clip in. So uh, that's about it. This here is the, uh, the tap for those, those screw holes. If you've never done it before, all you do is drill a pilot hole and then use a tap to get your threads. Um, here's the finished product with the shoe in it. You can see that it's uh, real snug on the back side there and real snug on the front side here. Worked out just like I wanted it to. Um, was great to race with and don't really know what else to say. I mean, the only other question I think that people would have is, well, is it worth doing this over just buying a cycling shoe? And, you know, that's that's hard to say. It's kind of a personal thing. This is a little bit heavier than a normal shoe would be, but uh, a lot of the problems that people have when, when running barefoot and stuff is their foot starts to spread apart a little bit. So a regular cycling link shoe is a lot thinner, a lot narrower. So I've heard of people having pain in their foot when using cycling shoes and this would uh, eliminate that. So anyway, uh, pros and cons, it's a lot of work for, uh, you know, for that. And uh, you know, I don't know that you would save that much uh, money by buying, by building your own platforms. But if you wanted to, this is a great route to go. So. Um, good luck with it if you're going to try to do a similar type of project.